You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hello everyone, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming. As some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Dawn Chorus Lakes Path. Yes, doing like, doing like. Well, hopefully we will be. But anyway, guys, last time we left off, we had just gone back to this is ah yeah I think this is my room. God, my room is so pretty in this game. <laughs> but yeah, Carvin's room is really gorgeous. I think this is Carvin's room anyway. But anyway, guys, yep. Yeah, it's his room. It's beautiful. I love the lighting and everything. It's crazy, crazy well done. RTX on? <laughs> anyway, guys, sit back and enjoy. Let me entertain you for the next 20 minutes, and let's jump right into it, shall we? <clears throat> All right, let's do it. I almost forgot how this room looks. Despite that, it still feels mine. Everything is just as I left it. My things are arranged neatly on the shelves, and my empty bag is still standing on the floor, standing near the floor, still standing near the door. This room is so nice. I think you got the most lucky of us all. There's such a chill vibe here. And that double bed. Lake flops down on it with such an impact that it almost knocks off the pillows. It's so comfortable, too. You know, you really are even livelier than usual. Of course, he's in your room. It's exciting to be here. I'm happy we're staying in a place like this. It's a nice change from our dorm. Our dorm isn't half bad either, but it's not at the level of this place for sure. Oh, Carvet, you were supposed to show me my photo. Is it ready yet? Ah, yes! It takes like ten minutes. It was uh, already developed by the time we got food. I should change into fresh clothes. I'll do that in a moment. I sit down on the bed, take the photo out, and put it between us. I'm curious of the result, too. Aww, oh, it's so cute! Here's that cutie! <laughs> oh, I love it. He's blepping. He's heckin' blepping. This is so cool! He bleps. <laughs> I didn't notice in the room or at breakfast, but he seems really tired in the photo. Like he didn't sleep for a day. Yeah, probably for a good reason. He probably wouldn't go see Torolf. He leans on me, his eyes still on the photo. Can I have it? Sure thing. I took it for you. Thank you, Carvin. You're the best. The weight pressing against my shoulder slowly increases. I turn to look at Lake and see his head pressed against my arm limply. His lips are slightly open, his two cute fangs peeking slightly and glistening with saliva. White strands of hair obscure most of his face, shining in the morning light like silver. He's asleep. He must have been really tired, much more than I could tell from the way he acted. I feel a sudden urge to pet his head, but I don't want him to wake up, so instead I, st I sit still and let him rest. He looks like he needs that. There's still a lot of time until lectures. I can just stay here and watch the trees disappear into the snow outside, or think of the times I've spent with Lake. There's less of them than I would like. I really need to meet with him more often than once a week, or uh, more often once we're back. Once it's warmer, I could take him to the beach. There's some okay scenes not far from Anzalo. They're nowhere near as nice as the ones in Italy, but still. I should have played some music. Even with Lake sleeping, it would be nice to listen to something together instead of sitting in silence. I wonder what kind of music he likes. I never saw him listening to any music, now that I think of it. Maybe he doesn't like music. No, that's impossible. I don't know anyone who could say that with full honesty. I consider him my friend, yet there's so much I don't know about him. I can't ask him now, though. He looks so helpless and vulnerable sleeping, and a bit silly, but in an endearing way. I lean on my other arm and look out the window, the white snowflakes dancing in the wind outside now reminding me of Lake's mane. Better not be it. Okay, thank god. Okay. Alright. <laughs> I was worried. I stand up and stretch out, groaning lightly. The chairs here definitely weren't designed with watching an hour-long lecture in mine. Lake, it's over now. Huh? Lake rubs his eyes, looking around in confusion. The lecture is over. We have a break. The next one is in an hour. Oh, right. Good thing you don't snore. You slept through half of this one. Though it's my fault. Maybe I shouldn't have talked him into going to a lecture about neurobiology. It turned out to be pretty technical, and I very well understand it couldn't be too interesting for him. That bad, huh? Sorry, Carvin. I'm a wreck today. Why, though? We didn't, we didn't go to sleep that late. Yeah, but I couldn't sleep for a few hours after that. I'm like that sometimes. Oh, yeah, I fucking bet you are, you naughty lion. I'm gonna boop your snoot. Boop. <laughs> How about we go for a walk? I should wake you up a bit. Sorry, I think I'll just go to my room and nap for a bit. Oh. Hey, that's fine, too. You look like you need some rest. Let's get you to your room, okay? Makes like, nod sleepily and then leans on me. What a silly lion. <laughs> I 
That's not how you get to your room. Sorry, but I'm not carrying you there. At least not this time. I know. He wraps his he wraps his arms around me and doesn't let go anyway. Oh. Around us, people leave the makeshift lecture hall, shooting us some weird looks along the way. Not that I mind too much, though. I'm used to them. Feeling okay? Yeah, I'll be fine. I'll go now. I think I can still find my way to my room. Lake joins the stream of people exiting the room without a look back. Looks like I have an hour for myself. What should I do? Uh, I, I go to my room. Yeah, I can go to my room for a little while. Hmm. Ah, oh, they need to change the art asset. Still light coming through the window. A little too much for the time of day. <sighs> Back in my room again. The air here smells comforting, of wood and clean linen. I walk up straight to my bed and flop down onto it, letting the soft mattress support me and sigh loudly. It feels good to let go. And having a huge bed just for myself is pretty great, too. I lie like this for a while, enjoying the silence. I have a bit less than an hour for myself. There's not much I can do in that time. Maybe I should also take a nap. I wonder how Lake is doing. When the lecture started, he just deflated in his seat and slept through half of them. Poor lion. I thought to make him go to bed earlier today. I just grab a book for now and read a bit. I took two different ones with me and I haven't started either yet. I put on some music and flop back on the bed to indulge myself in vivid hallucinations until the lectures resume. Vivid hallucinations? Okay. That went quite fast, didn't it? Maybe for you. The lectures for, the lectures for today have concluded. I talked both Jorgen and Yulake into joining me for the last one and Rune tagged along with Jorgen. This many in a row is, well, a lot. Too many for me, to be frank. I didn't attend all of them, but still, it's well into the afternoon already. That last one was interesting, at least. Never knew dolphins could communicate with us and understand the grammar of our language. The lecturer could show us more of the experiments themselves. That was the, that was the most interesting. That one was nice. Yeah, a shame we missed a few I wanted to see, though. I was excited to hear about brain implants, and we got equilibria of stellar systems instead. So, what plans do y'all have for now? We're free for the rest of the day, sans the dinner. Yeah, I need to resume working on a project for the university. I'm already a bit behind on it. Oh, now? Yeah, I won't have time for it after the camp. I'll try to finish it quickly and have a free evening. So, see you later. See ya. Damn, working during the camp, he's crazy. You could take a lesson from him, you know. Thank you, I'm fine. So, how about you two? Any ideas what to do now? How about a walk? I could use some exercise after sitting all day. I'll go back to our room for now. I want to finish reading the book I started yesterday. A walk outside sounds nice. I'm up for that. Okay, let's go grab our jacket so we can meet at the entrance then. Oh, I'm fine going out as I am. I can wait for you in the lobby. I nod and continue into the corridor with Jorgen alone. Neither of us speak until we reach the stairs. The silence doesn't feel uncomfortable, but I still feel like I should say something. What book are you reading? A book about near-death experiences. That's why I mentioned the topic earlier today. It features both theoretical data and accounts from people who went through them. The topic is interesting, but ultimately I was only disappointed by what I have read. I started it, though, so I feel like I should finish. Disappointed? You seem to be fascinated by the topic. Yes, but then I read some more about it after breakfast. I don't really believe these experiences are inexplicable or metaphysical in any way. It's more your field of study, but I know a bit about the topic, too. Their impact on people that experience them is what is interesting. What people see during these visions, tunnels of light, celestial beings talking to them, life review, out-of-body experiences, a sense of peace, what people describe is pretty much identical to a DMT trip. Ah, DMT, yep. In fact, it's entirely possible that it's exactly what triggers these effects, naturally produce DMT flooding our brains as we die. Still, they usually have positive effects on people that experience them, not unlike regular DMT trips, though. Just the context is dissimilar, so the lessons learned are likely lesser. That's... I don't know. It sounds pretty bleak, you know. Maybe. Not to me. How do you know all this, though? Why the interest in the topic? Let's say I've done a lot in my life already. And you see a lot of things going around clubs. I'll go continue reading. Don't make Blake wait too long for you. Don't make Lake wait too long for you. Oh, right. The door closes after Jorgen, and the silence that comes after it seems louder than our conversation. 
wonder if he had a near-death experience and he's trying to explain or rationalize what he saw. Hmm. Interesting. I turn around and continue to my room. I fancy myself a spiritual person, not a religious one. I do believe most things happen for a reason, but I do also believe in chaos and unpredictability of life. Still, it seems like some people in this life just roll natural d6s and some just roll natural ones. Yeah. Weird how life works. Anyway. What crazy weather. It's not that bad. At least it's almost not snowing anymore. Indeed. It seems to be getting better. And blah. I'm talking his like. Indeed, it seems to be getting better. The sun is peeking from behind the clouds, painting the valley before us with yellow hues. Okay, so I guess the windows to the cafeteria are tinted. So I thought it was later than it actually was. Well, I also help when they're giving, uh, when they're doing presentations. I really could live here. I don't think I'd ever get tired of this view. I'd have enough for a week, I bet. I already lived most of my life in the middle of nowhere. What interesting, what is, what interesting could I find, what interesting thing could I find here? Just more of the same. If you say so. Oh, I still have high hopes for the town tomorrow. It's cold, so I start charting alongside the guest house, Lake walking beside me. We don't say much, just taking in the scenery and the serene atmosphere of this place. There's no other, there's no one other than us here in a good few kilometer radius, most likely. Even with Lake by my side, I feel a tad solitary. Carvin, have you seen him? The who? Not who, but what? It's a film. Oh. Uh, what about it? I don't want to tell Lake, especially seeing him walk around in his flannel shirt only, but the cold is getting to me, and I'm not really up for any more ambitious conversations. It's sort of a sci-fi romance, but not really. A guy fresh out of divorce downloads a new AI, AI operating system and falls in love with it. I thought that was called... Okay, but it's, I think that's called her. <laughs> that's funny. That sounds kind of stupid. But, does it really? I can imagine that happening. People seem to be getting lonelier and lonelier, and contact between us seems to get more and more virtual. Maybe it's the future. Though, maybe it isn't. It's really well done. I like it because it's the warmest film I know. I was listening to a track from the soundtrack on my way here, and I've been thinking of it since then. I feel like I need this film in my life right now. I haven't seen it, so there's not much I can say in reply to that, but it's good to know that Lake listens to some music after all. Suddenly, one of the guest house windows opens for a brief moment, and out of it, a high velocity f at high at a high velocity flies a phone. It hits the ground with a muted thud, leaving a hollow leaving a hollow in the snow cover. What the fuck? All right, I take back what I said about the AI. I don't need no damn phones attacking me out in the wilderness. What the hell was that? Hey, Lake, wasn't that your window? Oh, damn, what the hell is going on there? Should we go check? Lake leans and picks up the phone from the snow. It's Jorgen's. We should definitely go check. Without a glance behind, Lake walks off to the entrance, and I follow his steps. Ooh. She can take her stupid messages and shove them up her fat, spoiled, furry ass. Despite the closed door, we can hear Jorgen loud and clear. Do you think it's safe to go inside? I hope. I don't think I've ever heard him this mad, though. Okay, you go in first. Me? Why me? Because it's your room and your friend, damn it. Ugh, right. Okay, give me a moment. Duh! Hello there. We enter the room and see not only Jorgen, but also a lamb I haven't met yet. Uh, who's really... Wow. We need to respond that, right? <laughs> wow, she's really tall. It looks like they're having a heated discussion, but stop as soon as we enter. Hello. I don't think it's a good time for a visit. Can you give us a moment? No. No need to. You can stay. That's Carvin. They're a friend. Carvin. This is Gudrun. My pleasure to meet you. Uh, likewise. I got your phone here, Jorgen. Just put it anywhere. I don't even want to see it now. Is everything all right? Well, no. Not really. Jorgen sighs and deflates, his shoulders dropping a notch. I got a message from someone that used to be close to me. We were in the same class in high school, but grew apart after it. 
She was fine with me being an edgy punk at the start of the school, but apparently Tripp's subculture with all their positivity and openness was too much for her. So I imagine that this asshole had the nerve to drop me a message persuading me to change my mind about transitioning. Thank God that ship has sailed. I never thought I'd see Jorgen get angry, let alone this mad. Though, hearing the story, not without a good reason. I only asked her where she got my number and then blocked her. And imagine that, of course, my caring parents asked her to do that. Jorgen stops to tip, starts to tiptoe around in a tiny circle, his jaw clenched and paws curled into fists. I messaged them what the fuck they were thinking, and my father replied that he wants to have the daughter he loves back. Well, guess what? She never existed in the first place. I just threw the phone out the window before I wrote something I could regret later, but wrote to Gudrun to come, at, to come before that. Jorgen's words ring in my ears. What the hell is this fucked up situation? That's really harsh. I'm sorry, Jorgen. Family should be a safe space where you can always feel welcome. I could always count on mine, even if we weren't, even if we aren't that close, very close anymore. I still know I have some place to go if things go wrong, but it's hard for me to imagine not having that. It's fine. We never really understood each other. I don't think we've ever been a happy family. They're conservative with an aggressively middle-class mentality. Ooh, excuse me. The same kind of people who give who gave rise to fascism. They always tried to imbue that rigid system of values into me, and I never liked that. I'm fine without them. I don't live with them, I don't talk with them, I don't really care about them either. I just wish they would stop trying to reach me. I want to hug the poor bat, but I don't think he'd appreciate that. He doesn't seem like a type to enjoy physical contact. Man, this is, uh, this is, this is heavy. Well, maybe they have good intentions and care about you, but they're just bad at showing that? Ans... What is that? Ans... Anskatan! To hell with their good intentions! If they care about their own illusionary world more than about their child, they deserve no good, wor no good word. I see what you mean, but to write off your family like that, no matter what they did? You know I can't really sympathize with you, Jorgen. I know. I'm sorry. I guess I went a bit too far. I know it's not easy for you either. Okay, I clearly lack a lot of context in this conversation. Maybe I really should leave after all. But believe me, I feel like I have no family, or worse, that I have stalkers I cannot get rid of. All I asked for was a quiet acceptance and they keep pestering me. I don't even know I have uh, I have undergone my transition already. Why do you still talk about why do you still talk with them then? I like to just say fuck it and erase them from my life. But yeah, as you said, Blake, they are my family. Even though they weren't there for me. Even though they keep letting me down, I can't help but feel something towards them. It's like a gravitational pull. I don't know how to fight it. Maybe you shouldn't. They might just need more time to adjust to the situation, and they'll accept it eventually. By pushing them away, you're stripping them from that chance. And from what I know, they didn't push you away. Maybe, but do they really want what's best for him? Or do they only care about their own comfort? Jorgen shouldn't have to go through this, period. Is there any way we can help you? I don't know. I don't think so. Though, I feel like I've come to a point when I have to make a decision. What do you think, Carvin? You're the only impartial one here. Me? Why me? I don't know why I would be more impartial than Lake or Gudrun, but, or why my opinion should matter at all. But out of all of you, I'm the least familiar with the situation. Still, I'd just like to know what you what do you think of this. I would say, okay, so here's my take on it. Um, knowing a lot of friends who've had issues with their parents when they've been transitioning, I can understand why that person would want to cut contact with them because they don't feel like they're loved, they feel like they're isolated, they feel like they have been cut off from that trust. God damn, she got some hips. Jeez, okay. Ah! <laughs> back, back. Ah! Back to the topic. Okay. Ah, sorry. <laughs> but I can also understand where the parents come from as well because, okay, so it's something they're not familiar with. Okay? It's something that maybe they need time to adjust. I, I grew up in a pretty Catholic family. 
and being with a guy for as long as I was, uh, a lot of my family just kind of cut me off, and I still love them, you know, I still wish the best for them, I don't hate them, I just hope that one day they can just accept me for who I am, I don't bear any animosity towards them, now I can see how if it was your parents, you could be even, you, the, the hurt could be multiplied, because those people, those are people you grew up with like around almost 24-7. But at the same time, you need to understand that you've basically, you've basically broken their image of you and that they need time to adjust to that. It's not your fault. It's their fault for having that, for having that rigid, non-moving, never-changing image of what you are to them as a person. But we're people. We change. We're not always going to be the same. We're not always going to be static. We're human, and we're imperfect, we have faults, we can be very hateful, very paranoid, very paranoid, but we can also be very loving and understanding, very empathic, and we can be altruistic to those we meet and try to better ourselves. I'm sorry, I didn't mean for this to be a fucking moral lesson. Anyway, guys, um, so I will make this decision on the next episode. I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to pick. It's going to be a secret. <laughs> but anyway, guys, let me save it right here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye! <laughs>